right guys welcome back the 1988 restore project is coming to a close we just have a few more little small items to wrap up and i'm going to take care of a couple of those in today's video uh, one of those is going to be uh the things that you guys have mentioned in the comments in the previous videos of underneath the car it looks like there's, a, there's rust underneath there it's actually primarily just the red dirt from mississippi where i picked the car up if you go back to where i picked the car up you can see a, a clip of us driving down that road and that's primarily where this car was used kind of on the farm area and that dirt down there is just basically red it looks like rust whenever it was caked underneath the bottom of the car i sprayed it off of most of it but i haven't had the car up really high enough outside to get it sprayed off so i'm going to try to do that today i'm going to try to show you guys uh most of that is just that red dirt there may be a few little trouble areas uh, uh, rock chips or something like that that I'm gonna try to take care of a little bit later but uh, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is get this thing pulled out get it jacked up see if I can get some of that uh, dirt sprayed off of there in those hard to reach areas <laughs> I've got the underside of the car all sprayed off and it is looking a lot better all that red color that looks like rust has been removed uh, there are a few spots where the undercoating has chipped off and it has left like that under uh, coating primer like that gray primer that goes on there so I may have to scuff some of that up and throw some undercoating on there just to put that layer of protection back on there so that primer doesn't chip off and it lead to some raw metal under there in the future so I'll probably take care of that off camera nothing special about that it's gonna be just some sanding and spraying some undercoating under there to take care of that now I went ahead through the H emblem on the hood there I've been kind of waiting to put that H emblem on there it's to like signify the finish of this build but even though the car isn't 100% complete yet and I've still got work to do I went ahead and threw it on there really because the exterior of the car is done except for that H emblem there so we did throw that on there and it really finishes up the look of the front end of this car I know a lot of you have been asking where's the H emblem well there it is and it looks a lot better and it's really a twin to the car sitting right next to it they look identical other than the wheels right now so I mean that's that's obviously a style that I like and uh, I have a feeling that the uh, the new owner of this car whoever that may be is really gonna like it as well um, one thing I was wanting to do on this car before we finished up the build was actually to put some new LED bulbs all around the car and thanks to Oxbeam, today's video sponsor, they did send out an entire set of LED bulbs to put on the car which includes their GX series headlight bulbs. Um, these are the H4 bulbs for the Euro spec headlights. 
So if you're going to be ordering them, uh, make sure you order the 9005, 9006 for the USDM headlights. Uh, if you have an 88 to 91 CRX here in the US and you're not using these single bulb headlights. So let's go ahead and open these boxes up and take a look at these LEDs, see what they're all about, and get them installed in the car. These do look to be well made. Uh, they do have the external LED driver, so they should fit in most headlight housings. Uh, we're going to see how well they fit in these Euro spec headlights. Um, everything looks pretty good. They do have an external fan to help keep them cool. Uh, so you got to make sure that you've got it kind of weather tight around the headlight. You don't want a lot of dirt and grime getting up in that fan. Uh, but let's go ahead and check these out. Uh, these are the high low beam headlights in one bulb. So let's go ahead and get them installed and see how they compare to the halogens. First things first, big shout out to Oxbeam for sending us these LED bulbs for this CRX. The lighting situation is significantly improved on it. I ended up swapping all the bulbs on the exterior of the car with the LEDs, um, except for the front here. I ended up swapping back the original filament bulbs on the corners just because I like the contrast of the color. The LED bulbs are a little bit cooler white. These are a little bit of a warmer white color. I just like that look a little bit better. The headlights themselves are a massive improvement over the original. You can tell here, even in the daylight, um, at nighttime, it's going to make a massive difference uh, on the roadway as well as just any visibility and people being able to see you, especially in this car. It's such a tiny car. You really want people to know that you're around. Um, one thing I noticed about the rear lights on the blinkers is uh, the LEDs being that cool blue or that cool white, it did alter the color of the amber lenses just a little bit whenever they were on. Uh, I don't think it's too significant, but it's just a, something to take note of. Uh, that cool white will make a little bit of a difference in that. I love how they flash on and off 
uh, immediately as opposed to the halogen which kind of dim and then brighten back up. It gives it a more of a modern look whenever uh, they're activated. So I did take the car to get it aligned. Um, I do not have a front camber kit or a rear camber kit. So the camber on the car was a little bit significant. It's like negative four degrees. So I've actually got a Skunk 2 front uh, control arms on order. They should be here in a few days. So I am gonna put some uh, camber adjustable arms on the front as well as some uh, camber adjustable arms on the rear. I'll have to take it back, get it realigned. Hopefully that will resolve the situation with the alignment being a little bit too far off. Uh, and hopefully that'll improve the drivability of the car as well. So that'll probably delay the car being for sale a, a few more weeks or a couple more weeks, but no big deal. I'm not in any hurry to get rid of the car. I've still got a lot more things to clean up around it and to replace. So I did see your comments about how the shift linkage pin actually has a ring that goes around it to help keep that from falling out, um, as well as a dust boot. Now I did order those and I've got them right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get these installed. That way we can check this off the list and just keep moving forward. I did get the shift linkage clip and the boot installed. That was pretty easy install, nothing too complicated about it. The hardest part is really just getting that pin out of there. I used, did use a punch and a basically a breaker bar uh, from the top to hammer that down. And then I did reinstall it from the bottom like you saw. So that job is done. Uh, hopefully you guys are happy about that. I am because uh, it was something that was missing that I really didn't realize was missing at the time. So that does uh, help this car become a little bit more complete. Next thing I'm going to jump over to, and final thing in this video, is going to be the cargo cover here. Now, I've got a couple cargo covers here uh, for the CRX. One of them is actually still intact. If you look closely, you can see that it's actually pulling apart, and there's really just some small threads holding it together. The other one I have is actually completely separated, like most of them are. Um, so I'm going to go over a quick little fix that I have found uh, that makes this thing uh, one piece again. And it's actually, it looks pretty good. It looks almost like an OEM type hinge. Uh, it's actually called a living hinge. It's made out of a plastic material. I do sell these. So if you want one, uh, reach out on Instagram, CRX Seth, send me a DM. Uh, I'm offering them for $40 shipped anywhere in the US. I'm not gonna do uh, international shipping anymore just because I've had a lot of problems with uh, the shippers getting them over there intact without damaging them. So I'm gonna step away from that. So let's go ahead and jump over here to this hinge and I'll show you what it is. As you can see here, it's really just a long piece of plastic uh, extruded in a way where it's got these slots on both sides to allow the cargo cover to slide in there. Uh, it's really just the perfect thickness for this cargo cover. Uh, it does fold 180 degrees to allow the cover to open up fully while it's installed. I'll show you that after we get it installed. It is a little bit longer than the cargo cover itself. This one here hasn't been cut down for shipping yet. I do have to cut it down to about 43 inches for shipping, but you really only need about 38 inches to cover the width of the CRX cargo cover. Uh, it will fit the EG and the EF hatch cargo covers as well. So you can use it for that, but the, I don't know the lengths of those because I do not have any of those on hand. I have heard of a couple people buying them and using them for that application though. So this will have to be cut down like I was saying to match the width here. I do have one already cut down uh, the, the easiest way to cut these is really just to use a pair of scissors, sharp scissors or like an industrial scissor, something a little bit thicker. Um, it, it does take a little bit of effort to cut through it, but it, it makes a pretty clean cut. It's just a little bit of plastic material here. Not a big deal. So if your cargo cover is separating, but it's not fully separated, you will have to com completely cut it in half 
and separate it. I know some people like to say that it's still one piece and that it's just hanging by threads here, which is fine, but um, to use this, you will have to separate it into two pieces. So you can't use it with the hinge that has not been uh, split into two, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and cut this down and I'll show you how we install it. Pretty easy. All right, first things first, uh, you wanna flip your cargo cover over on the other side here. Uh, it's actually better to work on this side because you are going to have to remove uh, these little clips here on each end that are closest to the hinge. These are the clips that hold it to the interior plastics. Just some Phillips screws that hold it in. All right, with that removed, you can actually slide this hinge on from the end. Uh, you can start at either end. I would recommend going ahead and starting on the smaller side of the cargo cover here. Just make sure that you cover up the carpet material because that does help hold this hinge on. It is just held on by friction. It's got some grooves inside of the hinge itself to help grab a hold. Uh, so make sure you include all of the fabric as, a, as best you can. All right, right here is the length that you're gonna to wanna to cut it. Uh, one thing to take note of is on this side of the cargo cover hinge, the thickness uh, of the fold here will have to be accounted for. You can cut on the bottom side down here to allow that to slide in there so you don't have a gap at the top when you flip it over. I'll show you that after I cut this one. So I'm just gonna make a little snip mark right here. Slide it back down. All right, with this side installed, you can go ahead and reinstall this plastic clip piece here, and it will actually help flatten the hinge down and hold it into place a bit better. All right, this next part is a little trickier because you have to slide this larger piece into the hinge and it does become a little bit difficult to manage both of these pieces, but it's not too bad. Now right, here's the part I was talking about you may wanna trim up to get this flush with the other side you'll want to notch out the bottom side of this hinge right here to allow for the thickness of this uh, trim piece right here. You can also fine tune the edge here with a razor blade to make it look more presentable. As you saw, that is a pretty quick and easy install. No major work involved, just gotta uh, cut it and trim it to fit. And it does look like almost like an OEM fix. Uh, I'm really happy I found that. And if that's something you're interested in, shoot me a DM on Instagram. Now that is like a temporary fix, meaning you can always pull it off, go back to the original cargo cover without damaging it. You can always glue it on there to keep it a permanent fix, maybe some sort of black polyurethane. Uh, I haven't used that yet on mine. I felt the, uh, the friction is enough to keep it on there. And now if you go yanking on it, it will separate um, as expected. It's not gonna be uh, held on there forever. 
So if you want to hold it on there forever without ever separating again, I'd recommend uh, adhering it on there with some sort of adhesive. I haven't used any yet, so I don't really have anything to recommend other than maybe some black polyurethane like I was saying. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been all over the place, but as we're wrapping this up, we got to jump around to get all these small things completed.